So it's early Sunday morning and I'm out walking with my new or my old but newly bought uh, telephoto setup. It's the Canon 100-400, uh, the classic version, not the version 2, uh, which I think is one of the most value for money super telephoto lenses you could buy today if you're looking on the used market. I bought mine for 7000 kronor which is around 700 dollars uh, and you get stunning image quality for that money and also really good build quality then I have the Canon 5D Mark II which I, saw, which I also bought used and I, which I would also argue is one of the best value for money cameras you could buy used today I got mine for 4000 Swedish kronor which is around I guess 400 dollars 450 maybe so together 1100 US dollars for a great super telephoto zoom setup and um, so this morning I'm gonna try to get some nice pictures and see what kind of image quality I can get out of this setup and how it is to use As always, when you pick up a Canon camera, one of the first things you notice is the superb ergonomics. The camera just feels so good in your hands and the controls just, they just feel perfect. It's so much joy to use it because of the ergonomics. Uh, this morning, unfortunately, I forgot to bring a lens hood, which would have been really useful because I got a lot of flaring. A great thing about owning a lot of different lenses in different focal lengths and uh, with different characteristics is that you, each time you take a new lens to go out with, the one that you haven't used in a while, you get to train yourself in looking uh, for, for things to photograph in a different way. So now for example when I have the 100, 100 to 400, I'm looking for things that could fit into a bit smaller image frame. Uh, I'm not looking for nice looking landscapes, but for details in landscapes or for small animals and whatnot. that I've found when it comes to buying used camera gear, which I was very much against in the beginning, uh, was that the quality and the shape that the things are in is usually a lot better than you would expect. Uh, I had this image before, before I started buying equipment used, that uh, when you buy stuff used it can be broken or very like worn down or could have hidden faults and stuff and of course it could be like that but I found that when it comes to camera equipment in particular um, I mean camera guys seem to be people who take good care of their stuff in general uh, probably because it is very expensive and also because many people they buy a lot of stuff and then they very soon discover that photography is not for them or they don't have the time or whatever and then they just sell the stuff so in very many cases you can get stuff that is basically like new uh, for half the price or for at least a fraction of the price. Uh, so if you're looking to buy some expensive equipment like a super telephoto lens I would encourage you to, to have a look if you could maybe purchase it used uh, because in many cases you can make a very good deal. And another thing that is good with that is that you can 
Then if you didn't like the lens or the camera or whatever, if you did buy it at a good price, you can just sell it for the same price to someone else. So basically you rented the equipment for free and that way I don't feel that I take any risks when I buy uh, expensive camera equipment like these things. If I use these for a few days and I get tired of them, I just sell them for the same price I bought them for or in many cases even more, even, even at a higher price because uh, I study <laughs> prices of equipment in cameras so much so that I kind of know what everything is worth and what I could sell it for. So when I see something interesting at a lower price than that, then I just buy it immediately because I know that even if I'm not going to use it that much, I can always make some money. I really love the fall. Uh, when you have these mornings, uh, first of all the sun goes up a little bit later, so you don't have to go up at like 3 a.m. to get some <laughs> nice uh, weather to shoot in. But also that you start to get this mist that comes more often in the fall. It's really beautiful with these misty mornings and with the dew. I like it. So I will try to capture as many early mornings as possible <laughs> this fall to go out with a camera and some interesting lens and just have some fun with photography. When it comes to focusing on a super tele zoom like this uh, and a DSLR, I'm not very experienced with what is the best method, but I got advice from a very experienced wildlife photographer that uh, a very good and simple method is to just use a single point uh, focus and then just set that focus point on whatever is most interesting in your picture like the eye of an animal and then just go for that and recompose your picture and it's really quite an easy method that I hope works most of the time we will see when I get home So now it really feels like summer is starting to end. And whenever a season is about to end like this, I always feel like, damn, I should have been out more photographing the nice things of summer. I should have been out more doing more macro photography and more landscape photography and more flower photography. And now summer is over and I have to wait a year again. But the funny thing is that I remember also me thinking last year that when fall was over I regretted not being out more photographing beautiful fall colors, autumn leaves and whatever. So I guess the lesson is that you should always kind of take care of whatever season you're in and go out every day and look for what is it that I can photograph now and not later and really seize the day to use a cliche. This is not actually the first photo walk I do with this lens. I've done one before, uh, but that was with my Sony camera. And unfortunately the autofocus worked really, really badly. So that's why I actually started thinking about buying a Canon camera, because I really wanted to use this lens, since this is the only affordable, but still good, uh, super telezoom. Uh, but at that walk I learned that it can be a good idea to have the lens 
uh, hanging like this from one side of the camera and then from the lens uh, because otherwise you kind of get this <laughs> problem so it's nice if it hangs to the side like this just a small tip that I learned on my last photo walk and since I already know that a lot of you are gonna be asking about this red dot it's not a Leica red dot but it's a red dot I just wanted to answer it immediately. No, I have not converted to Hinduism or anything. It was just that I had like a small sit here and I started scratching it and I scratched it some more because it didn't go away. And then the day after my skin had kind of <laughs> fallen away and now I have this red dot. Yeah, the only red dot I have at the moment. Hoping to maybe buy a used Leica at a later point just to try it out. We'll see. So now I've been out walking for one and a half hours, almost two hours. So I think it's time to go home and look at the pictures and see if any of them were usable. Um, yeah, I'll be back soon again. Please leave a like if you did like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post every week, even though I'm not, I'm not always succeeding. <laughs> so see you soon again, over and out. So all in all, I had a lot of fun with this setup and I look forward to going out with it again and trying to get even better pictures. These are a couple of shots from an air balloon I shot the day after. So that's it for this video and uh, make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. See you soon again.